Hello everyone, my name is Robert and welcome to part four of my talks on building a blog with various staff of Microsoft technology, including and probably most importantly to me, LightSwitch uh, and JavaScript and HTML. And so what we're doing in this series is like actually building step by step and you get to see every time I make a mistake and every time something doesn't work right and go through that whole process. So if you'd like to see how we got to the point we are, go watch the previous episodes. Let's start with um, a quick little trick I finally figured out today, which is how do we launch, um, how do we set the browser that launches this? So if I hit F5 at the moment, it's gonna launch Chrome. The reason it's launching Chrome is I was doing a demo earlier with ASP.NET and it was launched, I was using Chrome for that. And when you come into light switch, um, there's no obvious way to do this. The trick here is to find a folder. So we're in uh, file view, find a folder on your server somewhere like this, right click on it. And it, for some reason you can't do this on files. You don't have the option, but if you do it with folders, folder, go to browse with, there's a selector. Change the default in here. It, so we'll say that, okay. And I think I can just close this and we'll hit F5 and now it's launching in IE. So you can have it launch in whatever browser you want. So that's how you change the, the default browser associated. It's clunky, it's bad, but at least it's, that's how you do it. So where we left off last time, um, let's actually run this and just see how everything fits. So we've got our light switch client admin thing, which we still got to work on. Um, we can do cool stuff like add a post in here. Hello world. Uh, no, this should actually be published. I want another publish one. And we'll get to why I want another publish one now. So we've got an, uh, another post in there. Cool. Uh, we So we built our light switch admin system to create posts. Uh, what I want to do, we also created a system to an API to call this. So if I call that, you'll see we get the prompt down here uh, for this. I can go open, I'll open up a notepad. And there is my two public blog posts coming through web API. We're using ASP.NET web API for this. So they're, they're available there. And then we also created our the start of our p website. So we can actually hit that, uh, the HTML page, and it generates some content for us. And we can actually look in here. Uh, you can see we're just generating just uh, quite a little bit of content. We're not really doing much. Um, and what's nice is this is all pure JavaScript and HTML. Like there is no C sharp or .NET or anything magic in here. This is pure HTML. We really are building like this really clever client. Uh, cool, so we've got all that running and that's all going 100%. So what I wanted to do um, today is I wanted a couple of things. Firstly, I wanna handle displaying of the blog post better. I mean, at the moment, let's have a look at what we got here is if we go into our HTML, we call load all blog posts, which calls and reader. Um, it's this jQuery function, and I, when, I, when I was building this in the last episode, I mean, I was saying I just don't like this. There's lots of crap in here. It's just badly built. Um, firstly, this doesn't make sense as a jQuery plugin. The more I've thought about this, this is not the, a jQuery plugin. I want to do more with this. I, you know, I this thing here is, is so convoluted. Firstly, it wants to be a jQuery plugin. Secondly, it's handling loading and getting the data Thirdly, it's handling, like actually displaying the data. And so there's a lot of, there's not a lot of separation of concerns around what I'm doing here. So it's just, yeah, that's crap. So let's fix this up. Uh, so first, I'm gonna undo this as a jQuery plugin. Let's get rid of that. Uh, let's call this uh, blog reader. That can be our name. Ha, huh. yes, it is now a blog reader. We'll still use jQuery in here. Um, and by the way, if you don't know what, I'm doing here, this is kind of like a way of doing JavaScript namespaces. Uh, there's a guy, Jakob Pretorius, I hope you're saying that, pronounce that right, who is absolutely fantastic, who's got a great blog post. I'll put that in the in the comments below uh, around how all of this works and why this is the right way to do this. Um, and so every time I teach this sort of stuff, this uh, I always talk about his blog posts because they're really good. Um, and I like to use his pattern. Um, the only downside to this is the way I'm doing this at the moment. So we're switching this to be like sort of the singleton idea to that it will all just work and, and be correct. 
And I, the only problem is I'm only going to have one blog reader. I can't spin up multiple of them. For the moment, I don't think it's a problem. Um, I do want to be able to configure the URL separately. So uh, we will say blogreader.config. Um, and I want to say uh, URL. And this will be default API blog. Because that's kind of what I want. But I just want that separate. And then we'll... Yeah, let's have a blog reader dot uh, load all posts function for now. I think that's fine. Um, I don't want an element in here. This is not a jQuery plugin, so I don't need to return anything there. Well, I don't need to return the jQuery thing. And so what I want to do is pull that in, and that's actually fine. I mean, at this point, because we have such nice clean, st clean data, you'll remember from uh, the last episode I had to go and build my own blog post class for our system because we couldn't do all the serialization so we actually have a really nice clean data structure so really this is just going to be very simple around you know connect to this URL and call stuff and so we'll call blog reader dot config dot URL so we'll call that URL and then we'll return the return those results like that um, that's not going to work. We probably should do some promises stuff in here. What we should do is something a bit smarter. So let's do this. Instead of like, uh, we could probably do promises. I'm going to do callbacks uh, for now. So let's say, um, all, uh, all blog posts callback. And this will be null. And so when we get our blog post, we'll call all blog. Uh, blog reader dot config and all blog posts call it, and we'll pass on blog posts so the idea here is that we'll supply a function to this code so that this code is only now responsible for loading the data and only cares about that and it once it has loaded the data from wherever and however it wants to do it and if i needed to do any cleanup in here once that's done we'll call that function to do that callback into there all right so that's cool so we've got that there now uh, let's go back to here. So this is going to fundamentally change. So uh, what we'll do is we'll say blog reader. Note that see we get this global variable blog reader, and the reason for that is because it's attached to the window, which is kind of cool. Okay, so what we want to do config dot all post and we need to supply a function, and it's going to get the blog posts in this function like that. Um, actually, maybe what we'd want to do is be clever about this, and we'll say function um, display all blog posts, all blog posts. So we'll have, actually we'll do it this way, because it'll just be nicer. And it, then we won't have this inline sort of thing here, we have display all posts. I wonder if there's any compiler optimizations around that. I'm guessing there must be, because it's a fairly clever compiler thing. I don't know. Um, so that's quite cool. Then blog post reader dot load all blog posts. We'll call that function. So we have a time to we, we could able easily set it up in the config, and then we did, it's all ready. So now what we need to do is so I'm happy about that. That 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 piece of code now feels better, feels cleaner. What I want to do now is be able to display this. So how do we display it? Um, and I mentioned at the end of the last episode, like I need to think about this and find a way. And so I did some research and reading. And really, what I want to use is a thing called handlebars. Um, come back here. Handlebars. Handlebar. There we go. Handlebars.js. So Handlebars.js is a JavaScript library. Uh, there are a lot of these sort of templating JavaScript libraries. Um, stash and handlebars and things like this. Handlebars is pretty cool in that um, for us, it's uh, we got really good support in Visual Studio for this because I'm using uh, web extensions. So let's go and drag on handlebars. Um, you know what we should be doing is using a minified version of Reader. Because we don't want this stuff. So let's minify it with the web essentials. By Reader. Um, so yeah, we got a minified version. Uh, I'm going to have a video up next week that will go into like all kinds of cool tricks around minified versions and how they all work. For today with Visual Studio, just accept that I created a minified version. 
Right, so the way handlebars work is, first we have to define a template. We have to say, you know, this is, sorry, we need a template. So it uses a script tag, because then the browser doesn't render it. Uh, it needs an ID so we can find it. So we'll call this the blog post template. Yeah, that's a good one. Good enough name. Blog post template. Cool. Uh, class, and uh, not class, type. And you'll see here, we've got X handlebars template, Visual Studio with the uh, web essential stuff all adds that coolness in. And so now in here I can just type out like HTML, so I'll type out HTML, and then we use these little data slug things like this. Uh, so what we'll have, so we have our class here, we'll have title come through and um, the body we want to do. So we'll start with, let's start with title. Uh, so it'll be important. And then we'll have um, header. Uh, let's put a div under that. Actually, well, let's wrap this whole thing in a div. So, control K S, HTML div, like that. Um, actually, on class, blog post. Um, how weird was that? Silliness. Right, and then so in here, I want to div, and we'll put another little one in here, and I want to put the publish date time. Cool, and. Let's just, we'll leave a space, because uh, I'll put some icon. I'll, I think I'll do icons or something in there, and we'll do author. Author, and then after that, obviously, after that div, well, we'll need the body. So we'll do whack, whack, whack. Body, in the wrong place. Body, there we go. And so we have this like way of, of defining stuff, which is quite cool. So now, what I need to do here is I need to go and get that thing. So we'll say... Um, template, uh, var template, obviously. Var template is equal to, and we'll use jQuery to find it. So we'll say we it's uh, ID of blog post template. So it'll be hash blog post template. And I need the HTML from that, so that's our template. We then take that and we compile it. So I have a compiled template. And we use handlebars dot compile, and I pass in my template. And this is just like a performance optimization. When I was looking at the difference between a couple of these, there was a, there was a whole bunch of them. There really is a lot of these templating frameworks. Um, mustache and handlebars were the two that kind of appealed most to me. I chose handlebars over mustache uh, because Visual Studio integration is better. It, it's actually, it's probably about the same for them, uh, but I like it just felt better. But handlebars has uh, compiled templates where mustache didn't. So there's performance optimization in there for handlebars, as well as handlebars has logic things. So I can actually do like an if statement in here, which is really useful, um, which I couldn't do with mustache. So I, that's why I went with this one. Right, so what we'll do is then we've we've got our compile template. And we'd have to do that once, we've had that sort of cost once. And so we'll say for each uh, blog, po all blog posts, all the blog posts, thank you. Function, index, and uh, will be blog post. So we'll for each of all of that. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, C sharp language come through. Uh, oh, I forgot up here. Uh, where do I want to place this? The target placement, I guess. Well, we want to place it in our div class post. So we'll do uh, dot posts. Actually, div dot posts. Just be a bit more specific. So that'll be where we want to put it. Um, cool. And what I'm thinking, we'll just do this as strings. So we'll just do HTML as an empty string as well. So we've got some stuff there. Right, so now what I want to do is, as I loop through each blog post, uh, what I'll do is I will take each, I'll say HTML, our variable, plus equals. And then I say, I take my compiled template, open, and I put in the data. So in this case, blog post. And then I'll add that in. And and so what it will do is it'll take the object, the parameter, the properties of the object, in this case blog post, and it will then replace the data slugs and generate me some HTML and return that. And then once I've got all my HTML done, I can say target placement.html and pass in my HTML and be done. That should be nice and quick. Um, so I actually don't know if that'll work. Do we have everything we need? to the test cave, Batman. 
who knows if we have everything we need. Alright, cool. Blog. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Where blog? There we go. Look at that. Yeah, it was a little bit of a lag there because obviously it's it's got to like connect to asynchronous stuff. But hey, how cool is that? Uh, these shouldn't be H1s. They should be H2s, shouldn't they? So change that to H2. Control F5. Um, just restart. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Go away. Uh, bl uh, web blog index. There we go. That looks a bit better. So we've got some cool stuff here. Um, there's, there's obviously, we need to do some styling and stuff on this to make this better, but um, it's getting there. And so you, we get this cool sort of performance thing. Uh, and note that, you know, we're only showing published posts because our query that we defined in LightSwitch is there and it's ordering with the newest ones on top. Once again, our query from LightSwitch. So that's going well. I like that. I like that a lot. I think that kind of solves a lot of what I wanted to do there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's see. Um, what else haven't I been? So that reader is pretty cool. It's nice and simple. Uh, let's go and start to make this a lot smarter now. Let's go and improve this because I want to do a whole bunch of other tricks with this. So we'll start off with being able to just get the count of the blog posts. So what I want to do is make the controller smarter here. Um, and hmm, how am I going to do this? Because what I want to do is actually I want it's a public, so it'll be I want an int get right now, right? And once again, I just want to do this sort of stuff in here. We'll just copy that out. Um, I just want to count the number of posts we get back from my query, and I want to just say, you know, return, actually, I don't even need to do that. I can just say return execute.count. I don't think I'm going to have the long count. I don't think we need to get up to x64 blog posts, but anyway. How will it know the difference between which one I want? It shouldn't, yeah. Um, in the same parameter types. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I wonder if we have, like, a name. Action name. This action should be renamed to. Uh, let's just change this to get count. I mean, that should allow compile. I mean, it's not going to work because obviously it doesn't know what to do. Actually, I mean, maybe we can just figure this out. So we, we get that. Oh, you know what we could do? So this is one of the cool things about Web API, right? Um, I need to turn on the full NuGet package manager. Because um, I've been running off my own personal local one. Uh, what we could do, because this is just Web API, right? We can go and put helper on. So I want Web API help pages. So this is a, such a cool thing. Oh, I have no idea if this works with LightSwitch. It would be so cool if it does, just like, done, thanks for coming, install. So I'll show you what this is. This is awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Downloading the internet now. NBC, web pages, Razor. Oh, please don't break everything on my, my web API application. Please don't break everything. Okay. All right. Um. It's just at this point, hit F5. Uh, does not exist in system. Uh, XML link. Uh, we're missing a reference there. So add reference. System.xml link. Okay, dokie dokie. Run again. Tick, 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 tick. Ooh, it's all working. That's quite cool. All right. So this should still work. Like API blog. And we get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way, so the idea behind helper pages, uh, come on, go, cancel, whatever, fine, just be a pain in the butt, is that we can go AP help, help API, help API help, something like this. Uh, all right, let's go in back in here. And it might not have actually even set up 
the root. It is a separate MVC area. Um, so help page config. And blah, 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 blah. Uh, no, so there's nothing in there. Controllers. It's help page. The controller is called help controller. So we forward slash help. Um, Sure it was. Okay, so there's the root register area. It's all be forward slash help forward slash so control will be help forward slash index. Okay, so it should just have that in there. Um does this get called anywhere? Find references. I wonder if I'm not because I've gone and added in this manually, it might not know to call this. So let's do this help page area registration register all areas me eh? I don't know I don't know what I'm doing I'm just I'm typing stuff and hoping it all sticks um There's API blog is still there, which is fine. So we should be able to just do help. Ooh, it's spinning. <gasps> Ooh, look at that. It actually did something. There you go. Away. Go ahead, go away. I don't care. Provide a general description of your API here. Uh, so then I can do help forward slash blog. No. Help forward slash API. No. Uh. Bugger. Hmm. We just got help loaded. Look at that. Provide a general description of your APIs here. Um, why are you not seeing my API? Uh, I'm guessing there is something. It probably should have been called and it hasn't been. So the joy of like, you know, when you're in, not actually in ASP.NET MVC and you're trying to use ASP.NET MVC things. I mean, it should all just work, but anyway. Um, That's calling area registration. I'm guessing that I don't need this in here. I could just do area registration. Uh, registration. Dot. Yeah, register all areas. Okay. So we add in the area. So we've got a default route uh, for API. Um, Hmm. Okay, uh, sample generation. Models. There's our controller. And that will return API descriptions. There's an action result for API and the API ID. Um, let's do that and just see. Maybe there is some weird web API thing that I'm not aware of. Help blog. That's the API. No, that's not. I don't know who you are, and I'm not going to help you. Help. Okay. So that's returning view API descriptions. Um. Hmm. Alright, so I stopped the video to do a bit of exploring for a while and see what was going on. And I think, I, I now know what the problem is. So let's have a look just where we were. Um, so we added that stuff in, went to help, and we got nothing. Okay, couldn't find anything. What I didn't think to check was actually make sure that my API still worked, right? I, like, I just assumed, like, oh, okay, well, we got one kilobyte file back. That must all be working, right? Yeah. Retry. So let's do that again. Uh, API blog. Did it open? It's just fading out for whatever reason. Anyway, what's actually happening is it is fading. Um, 
we might actually get a better experience of this in Chrome. There you go. You can see it's like, oh no, multiple actions found. It is still, it's fading out. It's because we have this get counter. If we comment this extra one we added in, which was the genesis for the idea of like, what will it do? Um, then uh, obviously our API works, but also our help page suddenly starts working, which is kind of cool. So we have a help page. So now let's put this back in uh, and let's give this an action name, which is what I want to do the whole time. Uh, we'll call this get count. Uh, count. Um, and let's just see what happens then. I don't know what's going to happen. This could break again. Help. And it's broken again. I want these things to be different. In different ways. Rest, you know. Har, 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 har. Hmm. I want this to be nicely restful, but I mean, I can't think of a nice way to do this. Um, HTTP options put post head. It's not really a good head option. Um, you know what we could do is like these are all differentiated on HTTP headers. Do we have a way to do? So I don't want to do HTTP. All right, so we have to do get. So th th we're going to do get, and it's going to return dynamic. I mean, well, this, this is going to do different things for different people. Sure. Is that okay? Will Will you be happy with that, Visual Studio? Well, not Visual Studio. Web API. Will you let me return dynamic? Uh, so it'll be web. Uh, let's just actually see. Uh, that won't work, obviously. What am I doing? One byte, which makes sense if we just have a yeah, look to Okay, so it will happily return that. I wonder what the help looks like on that. Help. Documentation for. Uh, oh, there's all my breakpoints for me trying to figure out everything that's going on. It's fine. Sample. We all right. Awesome. So we're gonna. Ha this is gonna have to be slightly more complicated. Right. So what I want to do? Let's do some private methods. Let's Private int get count. I mean, I guess I could pass some parameters in the query string. Uh, and this will be get all posts. Once again, this will be private. So now what I want to do is based on, are we going to do query string or header? Um, Let's have a look at my web API registration um, ID, controller ID. I don't want ID for this. Uh, let's change ID to be um, type. Yeah, we'll just call it type, I guess. As a I'm just being finicky about naming now. Probably doesn't matter. Uh, string type. Right, so if, as what we could do is switch on type to upper invariant. So you send me something, you get something back. So if you say ask for, if you don't give me anything, uh, then you'll get this back. So then we'll say return get all posts. Um, and actually, I want a second one of this, which will always be a numerical blog post, which is if you just pass, if you don't pass this in. So now I have one that will take a parameter and one that won't. Uh, and this will be return get all blog posts. Um, otherwise, if you supply something, let's say count, I don't know if this is really good web API, but anyway, it's interesting. Um, or not web API, but RESTful services. So let's do that now. Let's see what happens. Um, okay, helper. There we go. Hey, look at that. Type blog. All right, cool. And th this one should be quite clever because see, it's got all the smart stuff there. Publish date, time, and time, all of that good stuff. Uh, but the other one should be pre pretty dumb because it doesn't know because I'm returning dynamic. That's fine. So what I should be able to do, and let's actually do this in Chrome, because Chrome was quite happy with um, maybe Chrome. 
uh, showing us stuff. It's a little bit happier then. Uh, let me just do So there is, if we just call it, and now if I say slash, whatever, it doesn't matter, but if I put in count, ooh, ah, yeah. <laughs> that didn't work. Um, interesting. So if we try it over here in IE, maybe that'll trigger a failure in count.json open. Hey, you just returned me that stuff back, you silly thing. Or slash count. Okay, uh, let's put a breakpoint in here. And we'll hit this again. So we are hitting the right method. Type is count. <sighs> it's too upper invariant, right? Yeah. Because I'm an idiot some days. One byte, if we open that, A2. And if we do this, go back to Chrome. Come on, Chrome, there you go. Two, nice. So now we have a way to get count. We have a way to get all the posts. Um, otherwise, actually, I mean, I don't think I particularly need this. Uh, this is just like fallback. Uh, so what I want to do is then, I mean, what we could do here now is to be even smarter. So I'm going to have another really smart method. This one is actually <laughs> going to take in a single parameter. Um, um, actually, I might want to take in multiple parameters for this one, I think. So what I can do here is then it will be position. And position can also be optional. So it'll be position is equal to root parameter dot optional. Um, you may notice that this is slightly different from what we had before. I copied and pasted out of uh, another project, just in case that this was a problem, but it wasn't. So, all right, so now we've got a cool one parameter. So then what I could do is I could say string uh, uh, int parameter. Uh, what do we call position? Position. Um, so let's see. So then what I could do is case like this um, single um, ooh, actually what we could do is let's break on that. I just want to see what, what like various things happen around this um, when we hit it. So if I do API blog doesn't get hit, which is fine. If I do API blog forward slash, doesn't get hit. If I do API blog forward slash count, doesn't get hit. Stop it. You why are you not hitting my breakpoint? Cancel. Hmm. Okay, now that comes in there. Finally, that comes in, and we have that there. All right. Uh, so what I could do? What about if I do one where type is that, and then we could do a second one? That just gives me some like interesting metadata -y stuff. Int position, and in this case, I want to do return. Uh, this will always only ever return a blog post, and I want to do some cleverness here. Get blog post at position. Uh, L position. Okay. And so what we should do is we'll first we'll do this. So we'll execute that. We'll say if position. So I want. Uh, is position is less than posts dot count. Um, then it's fine. Else uh, we'll just die. There. Exception. Uh, we'll probably need to f make that a bit cleaner later. Then so then we find it. So then what? 
Okay, so we know it's there, so then I can say var p is equal to post dot skip um, the count, which is the position. Take one. Uh, actually, we can just do dev take one. We can do single, which I think is faster. Yeah, and then because also gives me back one, and then I can say here return p and I'll project it, uh, return p, um, return, oh, you're not, it's not a collection error, of course. So this will do return new blog post, and then in here, select all of you, control h, underscore to p, uh, underscore tab p, replace all, cool, done. And I think there's something missing at the bottom here, it's not like that, that's fine. So this will allow me to say like I want blog post specific X. So I can say get uh, blog post at position and pass in position. So that looks good. And let's run this and see what happens. Uh, so we'll start with help, I guess. Help. Oh. Help. Good indication if my API is working. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, ooh. Uh, so that's looking good. So what I should be able to do. Um, I got one with position, one with string. So if I do uh, API blog count, uh, let's use back in Chrome because Chrome is much happier at showing this stuff instead of trying to make us download it. So if I do count, I get two, which is right because we have two public ones. If I do uh, get blog post at position one, ooh, it didn't like that at all. Um, let's go across through IE, which has the debugger attached. Blog post one. Um, okay, open. And it just returned everything. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder which one I'm hitting. Let's put some breakpoints here. I'm hitting this guy here. Type is one, hmm. which is not what I want. Uh, I wanted that to be int. This guy's not appearing in here correctly anyway. This could be a controller thing. So let's take that out. We'll take that out. Uh, and then what we'll do in here, I'm sure there's a smarter way to do this, but we'll very cleverly just go and build in something simple here, which is um, bar position. We'll never have negative positions. That's just a convention I'm establishing, it's fine. Uh, so then I can say if um, convert Actually, this is a better way, like int32 dot try pass. That's what I wanted to do. Type um, out as position. So if that actually all went right, else do this bit. We're making this like really complicated system now. Then in here, we'll return that. I'm not happy with this, it's messy. I need to figure out how to make this less messy. But this should, uh, what I want to get to, and I think it's probably as far as I'm going to get to today, is just being able to do this. And it returns just one post. There we go. Look at that. Nice. And it returned ID number two, because that's the one that's in position. That's really great. And if I did uh, ooh, um, this, that was the one with hello. Is the if I do this one? Sequence contains more than one element. Skip zero. Those are my posts. And take. Oh, wait, single. Um, right, that's sh not right. That should be first. Like that. Yeah. Because it's not the single one. We're actually on the first one. Mm. Single work because we were skipping the others. There was a, we were getting the very last one. So if I do zero, there we go. So that one's coming as that one, and now we've got the second one coming in there. 
Cool. So all of that's working quite nicely. I probably should use your fiddler to test all that. Uh, so yeah, so we got some cool stuff down. I never actually expected to put web API helper pages in here, but that's a really cool feature. Uh, so what we could do, just to make this really pretty now, let's come up here, welcome to the blog, and we'll just do a final thing in here, div, uh, let's do this with Z encoding, div footer, and it has um, an A link in there with the text uh, API tab. And this will be slash help. And so what we should do is if we now browse to this, we browse our web page. There is our stuff and there's our footer. We'll polish this all up just now, make this look really sharp. Yeah, that's getting there. It's 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 marked improvement. We really need to do some CSS on this. Right, uh, something I haven't done for a while. I do it at the end of every blog, uh, at the end of every f uh, video, but I actually haven't recorded it. Uh, it's just, you know, the Git stuff. Um, at the end of every episode, I go into Git and do this stuff. Uh, there's some untracked files. Uh, so we've got all our handlebar stuff, all the new web. I add everything in so that it, you can just grab it and it works. Um, I know that there are people who don't like having all the packages from NuGet just in there, but for me, it just makes it nice and simple. Um, Right, so this will be uh, the end of episode four. And we started off by cleaning up the, Java, the, the reader JavaScript. So it's now like following separation of concerns better. Um, we added handlebars to do UI. Um, we expanded our API to do individual posts and account method. I'm not overly happy here. Overly happy. Um, and then lastly, we did. Oh, they added web API help pages for our API that we built, which is quite cool. So we'll do a commit that will commit locally, obviously, on my machine. There's our commit. Uh, what's great is I can go into commits. You'll see I have one outgoing commit because we've done something. So I hit push. And remember, this goes up to GitHub. And so it'll initialize the push and put it there. And so what I just wanted to show here is this is so easy to, you know, get all my changes to GitHub every time. It's already, now nah, it's all done. It's already on GitHub. Um, and so it's so simple to work with. Visual Studio and with Git and GitHub and Bitbucket and TFS service and anyone who supports Git. Cool. So that is all I want to do today. Thanks so much for watching and I will speak to you soon.